Hello and welcome to our Christmas edition of Surprise We Both Love Movies. This week we'll be reviewing two movies, The Christmas Chronicles Part 1 and Part 2. I'll be reviewing Part 1 and Aaron will be reviewing Part 2. So Aaron, go ahead and introduce us to my review of The Christmas Chronicles 1 by giving us a quick premise of what the movie's about. All right, so The Christmas Chronicles 1. Uh, this movie came out exactly two years ago, in November of two years ago, and it stars Kurt Russell, Santa Claus. You have a couple of kids. You have Kate Pierce, Teddy Pierce, uh, and you have Kimberly Williams. Uh, she's best known from the Father of the Bride movies. She was the daughter, mm -hmm. and she's in here as their mother. So they're the four main characters. And there's other characters that pop in throughout the film. Uh, I think the only other big name you would know would be Goldie Hawn. Uh, she plays Santa's wife, but she's not in it for very long. And this first movie takes place where uh, Kate Pierce and Teddy Pierce, their father has passed away. And his, their father was really big into Christmas. And so the daughter has uh, an affection for that. Uh, the, the, the older son... Teddy Pierce, he's kind of gone on a wayward direction or is heading in a wayward direction. At the beginning of the movie, he steals a car. Kate Pierce catches him with a video camera, catches a glimpse of Santa in the video, and they both concoct a scheme to not necessarily capture Santa, but get proof of Santa. And this kind of leads to an amazing adventure that they all go on together. So what did you think of this movie? All right, so before I start out, my, my hierarchy of Christmas, you know, movies with kids starts at the top with the Christmas story, all right? So that's that's the pinnacle. That's as good as it yep. gets. So when I went into Christmas Chronicles, I really didn't know anything about it, even though it'd come out a couple of years ago. Aaron suggested it, and I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. So it's a wonderful story. Like he said, you know, it's about these two, a teenager and a young girl who's a preteen, and they're kind of, you know, he's lost his faith in Christmas, and and to your point, you know, she's a little bit mischief, mischievous and 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 uh, very interested in how things work and how how the world works and still figuring out what's real and what's not. And it's just delightfully told. I mean, you have this instance where the brother and sister, they're almost at each other's throats. And then they come to this realization or, you know, that, hey, Santa Claus is really, you know, he's real. And all the excitement and all their tension and all their stress between them, it all fades away. And they kind of just allow the Christmas spirit to, to wash over them. And, and really, Kurt Russell does an excellent job yes. at Santa Claus in this movie. I yes, mean, the does. way that he, you know, at some point in the movie, at like at the very beginning, he has to convince people that he's Santa Claus. And if you've seen any Christmas movie, <laughs> you know, that never goes well. But the way that they did it in this movie was mm -hmm. just spectacular. I mean, he walks around and he needs help from a group. He walks into a restaurant. He starts naming people and telling them what their name is and telling them what their wishes are and telling them what they wanted when they're seven years old. And uh, there's a great scene where there's something that of great value that one of the people <laughs> yeah. that he needed help from, you know, he asked him, you know, hey, do you remember this? This is really what you wanted. And all these people are, they, they can recognize that this guy knows something about him. And how do they, how does he know this? Because he's just crazy. He's just a crazy guy that walked into the restaurant. And it really just kind of puts that childlike spirit of Christmas in you when you watch it, because you're like, you know, you've been this, you know, disenfranchised and disheartened by all the things that you've learned as an adult and, you know, whether or not certain things are true and certain things aren't. But in this movie, you're able to escape and just enter that world where Santa Claus is real. And there's a lot of people out there that don't believe him in him, but there's a lot of kids, and a lot of people that still do. And it's just, it's just wonderfully done. And I know Chris Columbus, who's done a lot of kids movies. He's done Home Alone. He's done a Harry Potter movie. Yep. Just a really good director, but he executive produced on this movie. And you can see that that his insight was able to be helpful to make this a, a very good movie. So yeah. overall, I'd say, and, and as the story moved along, you got to see uh, a lot of people who are adults have to come to grips with whether the Santa Claus is real or not. <laughs> and it was very interesting and yeah, very funny, funny yeah. to see. Yeah. Like no matter yeah. how much he told them, sometimes some people were just not going to believe it. And sometimes yeah. it just took a couple of things and so other people were very open and they were like, oh, it really is you. So it's kind of interesting. It makes you kind of look at your own self and say, hey, you know, what would I do in that situation? Would I have believed them or would I not? And even though it's fantastical and silly, but it's, it's a fun little journey to go on for an hour and a half. So for me, uh, this movie was very good. As a Christmas movie, I kind of put in a special little cubby, a special little place yep. with Christmas movies. And uh, while it's not my favorite Christmas movie, 
I would say that I would definitely watch it. And I debated between a seven and an eight as a Christmas movie, but I thought it was a seven, if I was to be generous, a seven and a half as, as a Christmas movie. It's very good. It's very, it's yeah. very good. Um, and I'm sure as the years go by, it'll start to gain more and more following. And obviously they've made a sequel in the Christmas yep. Chronicles 2 which Aaron will be reviewing uh, directly after my review. So if you have the opportunity, it's on Netflix. You can stream the Christmas Chronicles one or you can stream the Christmas Chronicles two. So yes, here's what I'll say about Christmas Chronicles one. Uh, I'd give it an eight out of 10. So we're pretty close on that. Right. And it is definitely in my top 10 holiday films now. Um, Yeah. I really enjoyed it, but There's another movie that came out this year that we're not going to talk about now. We will talk about uh, in a future (laughs) episode. We're going to probably do another holiday episode shortly. But there's a certain Mel Gibson movie that just got released that is not to be missed. So (laughs) uh, we will talk about that at a later date. But I would give this a solid eight. It's not perfect, but it is thoroughly enjoyable. And it is very much escapism into the holiday season. So I was actually excited for part two. So uh, go ahead and give us a synopsis on part two here. All right. So it's been a couple years later and Netflix just this year released or just actually in the last month has released the Christmas Chronicles 2, the sequel to the first movie we just reviewed. So in the Christmas Chronicles 2, there's Kurt Russell again reprises his role as Santa Claus and Goldie Hawn plays as Mrs. Claus and has a significantly larger role in this yes. movie. But we also revisit the family. Uh, played by the, the teenage boy, played by Judah Lewis, and the teenage girl now, played by Darby Camp. And the situation now is, is that her mother has a new boyfriend, and they're going to celebrate Christmas in Mexico. Yes. She doesn't really like things, what's going on. She just doesn't feel like this is Christmas. It's the way that she's known it to be her whole life. And she decides that she's going to get out of here. And her brother, at some point, recognizes that she's gone and goes after her. And the next thing you know, they're transported to the North Pole. Once they're at the North Pole, then they recognize, I guess, in that situation, they recognize that an elf has gone rogue and has decided to disrupt Christmas. So Aaron, why don't you take it away and tell us a little bit more about the Christmas Chronicle 2 and what you thought about it? So first of all, this is a great companion to the first film. We've got everybody returning, plus we have a couple of new faces. As you mentioned, uh, Goldie Hawn is in the entire film. We've got Tyrese Gibson, uh, which was surprising to see. He goes from from the Fast and Furious movies into doing a Christmas movie uh, for kids. And he comes in as the boyfriend for the mom. And we also have um, Malcolm McDowell doing a voice of one of the elves. And there's someone new here that I've never seen before. His name is Julian Dennison. He plays Bellsnickel, the elf that gets kind of cursed. Now, The one thing I didn't like is they say turning into a human is a curse, which I thought was kind of twisted in a way. (laughs) That was his big thing for going wayward. What happened was he was very close to Santa. They have some flashbacks and he was very close to Santa as an elf, Uh, but he ended up getting very much into himself and a very big head and started to get kind of nasty. And so as the worst, he, the worst things got, he eventually turned into a human and he has been expelled from the North Pole. Now, what's really cool in this movie is they give you the history of Santa and they give you a little bit of backstory here. And the North Pole is protected by a force field from the North Star, the Star of Bethlehem. They have a piece of it and it sits above everything and kind of puts a shield over the village. Well, he concocts a scheme. He steals the star of Bethlehem, the, the piece of the star, and he destroys it. Okay. And so the shield goes down and nasty things come in and the elves are infected. And what they have to do is they go on the search for a new piece of the star. And they also have to get this root to make this concoction that will cure the elves of what they have been cursed with. So it's, it's outlandish. Uh, I will tell you when I first saw the trailer, it didn't really interest me that much. After the first film, it was so perfectly done and very personal and very fun. Mm-hmm. I thought this looked a little crazy and off the wall nuts, mm-hmm. but they balanced it well. Uh, it had everything in it that you would expect. I don't think it was quite as good as the first one, but it is a great companion film. 
-hmm. So you'll have fun. You'll, you'll feel something, you'll enjoy it. And this one was actually directed by Chris Columbus. Right. And you can tell because there are, there's one scene, there's one amazing scene that takes place in an airport mm -hmm. and Kate gets to meet somebody very important in her life uh, back when it was in the nineties. And there's a big musical number that takes place there. And it's kind of fun over the top, just fun. It's just goofy fun in the film. And so it was really well done, but there was some heartfelt stuff in that scene as well. So as for a film, for a score on this, I give the first one an eight. I'd give this one a seven and a half. It's close, okay. but mm -hmm. it's not quite to that level. I did find out though, that they are developing the Christmas Chronicles three. So we will see that in two years. Uh, <laughs> so we'll get another chapter in this. And I don't know with all these movies with Santa, I said they should do a Santa verse movie. Every, I guess that's the big thing. Now all the superhero films to bring in all these different genres and, It'd be funny to have Tim Allen, Kurt Russell, uh, Mel Gibson, and, you know, a few other people in these roles all in one Santa movie, which would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely would. And, and, I, and, I, and I, no matter what, throughout both movies, I'm sure this is true. Kurt Russell plays a unique and one of a kind Santa Claus that I found very refreshing. It's not your usual ho, no. ho, ho. He's very, he was fun. very unique and he brings something special to the role that makes it a little bit more fun for those of us who've seen a ton of Santa movies over the years. He certainly does. And I would say this is one of the best uh, Santa roles. He embodies Santa in a way that I don't think anybody else has. You can tell he's having fun playing that character. And right. Goldie Hawn has a lot of fun in this movie, too. So he is joined by his uh, companion in real life. Uh, for people who don't know, they've been together for like the last 35 years. Uh, they're not married, but uh, they are together and they have been for a very long time. All right. All right. So that's our review of Christmas Chronicles 1 and Christmas Chronicles 2. So whether or not you've seen the first one or you decide this year that you're going to watch the second part of the Christmas Chronicles, it doesn't sound like you can go wrong. So nope. for this week, I'm Lamont Lovejoy. I'm Aaron Fisher. And we'll see you guys next week. Happy holidays.